Hello everybody, uh, this is Juan Jose Gutierrez and this is SBS 335 Digital Ethnographies. We are exploring now the second module of the second unit of the course and uh, we continue to explore the idea and the concept of uh, tribes and electronic tribes. Three really interesting um, chapters of the book that refer to three different um, electronic uh, or, or virtual communities. One is MySpace, second one is Crafter.org, and then the third one is Warcraft, which uh, I'm suspecting you will be way more familiar with than, than I am. Anyways, um, for, uh, I'm going to start with, uh, with a general introduction of, of what are we after here. In, in the first segment, in the first module of this, um, of this unit, we started exploring this idea of, um, of tribes and we started exploring whether or not tribes is, some, is an appropriate concept to use to conceptualize communities that are generated in virtual spaces, that's uh, digital spaces, spaces that are enabled by technology that have to do with ones and zeros. Uh, the first one of the three uh, articles that we're reviewing uh, kind of surprised me because I thought we were, well, at first I thought this was a dated book. And, and then I checked and then I saw, well, no, MySpace is still there and actually has been revamped and, and reorganized. So to what extent can MySpace help us uh, theorize about this idea of virtual communities? Well, that's what this article is all about. If you're, need, if you're anything like me, you're going to need a reminder as to what MySpace is and what it does. So I have selected this uh, short clip um, with the beautiful image of a very famous actor for, uh, for us to, to listen to. So here we go. In a social media world that's dominated by the likes of YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, what many people believe to be the first major player is back in the game. MySpace marked its official launch of the all-new MySpace yesterday via an announcement from Justin Timberlake on his Twitter page. JT tweeted out, quote, this is MySpace, to which he attached a short video to serve as a visual explanation as to what exactly the new incarnation of the site will include. The quick clip was more of an overview with some great images, many of Justin's own page. So what exactly is the new MySpace and what makes it different from the MySpace of the early 2000s? Well, first off, users have the ability to log in using their pre-existing Twitter or Facebook accounts, and then they also have the option of using content from those sites and bringing it to MySpace. Second, in the opinion of Mashable.com, the status updates look very similar to the mobile app Path, with a large photo display and user comments popping up underneath. And last up is the most obvious bit of info. The new MySpace is very heavily focused on music, which is what has fans and media tech insiders most intrigued. Users have the ability to use the site to check out albums and search for popular tracks and artists, just to name a few of the many options. According to Tim Vanderhoek, who along with his brother Chris and Justin Timberlake is responsible for the revitalization of MySpace, the synopsis is pretty simple. Vanderhoek said, quote, in a single sentence, it's a social network for the creative community to connect to their fans. Sounds pretty cool and aesthetically, while well, the site looks great, now we'll just have to wait and see what users think. So here is the question. Are you guys using MySpace? And if not, do details on the new MySpace have you reconsidering? Join the conversation by hitting the comment section and make sure to check out the video JT tweeted out by clicking the link below. All right, well, um, interesting, right? So first of all, it exists, it's still there, and um, and something new is going on here. Uh, and if we're, if we're tackling this as, um, as a business model, uh, it's obviously we can see how MySpace had to reinvent itself because it was obliterated by uh, this mega site that is called Facebook, which we all, we're all familiar with. Um, but 
What's interesting about this retooling of MySpace is the fact that uh, they have found a different niche, a different space within cyberspace, if you like it, so that they can exist and they can become again. So this is crafting, this is creating a community, this is an invitation to be part of a community. So um, this refocusing generates elements, provides a call for participants, and then you have a community, a new model of community of practice. What I, what I found interesting about this uh, particular article is the fact that uh, he is talking about, um, well, to what extent we can have a community, a, a new urban community, when we're talking about the digital. So what's the difference between a, a physical urban community and a digital community? Certainly what defines a, a, an urban community and tribe, an urban tribe, is going to be geographical proximity and other elements, but certainly geographical proximity will be the key element. You don't have that in, in cyberspace. So what is it then? What, what generates the need and, and, and what justifies and what enables a community to be created as, as this one? Well, it is going to be that relational proximity, not geographic, not physical, but relational proximity that comes from sharing elements and needs and wants. And that's what explains a, the possibility for, for a new collective or electronic tribe. This is according to David uh, Dubery, which is the, uh, the, the author of this, um, uh, this chapter five on theorizing the uh, e-tribe on MySpace. Um, as I was reading this chapter, it, it, it came to mind this idea of the Burning Man, uh, which I, I just recently um, explored, and I was quite frankly amazed, and I uh, want to invite you to explore this. It, this is a community that is a physical, uh, real-time, uh, geographical proximity, uh, I don't know if I should call this community, but it's a group of people that come together every year, originally started in uh, San Francisco. They were kicked out of the city because they were burning stuff in the park. And that, now they're doing this massive, massive aggregations of people. They create a city of uh, hundreds of thousands of people from one day to the next. This is a community. And to what extent this type of communities are dependent on not geographical community, but, but online digital communities. To what extent the real community depends on the existence of the virtual community. It's food for thought. It's just an interesting um, uh, comparison. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you some clips on the discovery section of this module. Anyways, so uh, here's the thing. When, when you talk about the, the online Facebook community with millions, uh, I think they, they go by billions of people. To me, that's just overwhelming, overbearing, and nonsensical. I cannot relate to millions of people. I might be able to relate to hundreds of people, but not to thousands or millions. I might have things in common with lots of people and, and maybe with millions of people if I have a national identity, a state identity. But but to have interpersonal, real human relationships, that has to be in smaller circles. And that's the way it is. If you are putting together your your uh, your your brothers or sisters or friends wedding and you start crafting that list of guests, the couple might come up with hundreds of names of people that they can actually see a face and see a name and, and say, I have a meaningful relationship with this person. It's a, it's a former uh, student in the college, it's a, it's a relative, you name it. But it's a smaller, relatively smaller number. Why? Because we're endowed with that capacity. We, we're not endowed with the capacity to relate meaningfully to millions or thousands or, or hundreds of thousands. We're endowed biologically to relate to smaller circles. So what we need to look for in these larger uh, mega uh, spaces of relationships is what are th of those relationships, relationships that are relationships of surface and what are deeper relationships? Can we have deeper, deep relationships within these groups? And if so, then can we call that a tribe? Can we call that a meaningful community? Um, what are the elements that you find in a, in a typical community? You find language and you, have, you find group politics. Uh, and if you have that, then we're in, in the direction of finding a community. 
urban tribes and digital tribes then have uh, elements in common. Urban tribes that is physical tribes, but they do have differences. And the key difference, according to uh, Dubery, is that uh, in digital tribes we're mostly talking about um, um, the digital realm. Not, not it's it's not a physical proximity, but it's a relational proximity, and that is the key concept. I'm gonna um, a, a pause and, and generate a second uh, segment of this lecture because this is getting a little large and then I'm gonna have problems uploading to you. So I will admit you in, in the next uh, thing.